Hi, my name is Anton. I'm the product manager for the IntelliJ Kotlin plugin. My task is simple, to make our products bring joy to its users. Today, I want to tell you about some of the most interesting changes that have occurred over the past few months and what our plans are for the future. Once, I met with a colleague to talk about the UX of one of the code editor's features. And while working with the ID, he opened a relatively large file. I'll show you how it looked. He opened the file, invoked the copy action for all the text, and the ID hung for like 7 seconds. We didn't really pay too much attention to this at that time, as our heads were occupied by other things. And it just remained at the back of my mind, but wait a moment. How often do you experience 7 second lags when working with desktop software? I can recall other products doing this. And so, at some point we decided to research how much, people, uh, how much time people are wasting while waiting for the ID to do something. The following events were considered. Indexing, build, VCS actions, a file system refresh as IntelliJ IDEA has its own virtual file system, project import, and UI lags. We collected and processed data from anonymous statistics and this is what we got. We found that the amount of wasted time was only about 5% of the total session time, so don't panic. But this 5% was distributed as follows. Indexing got 28%, build 16, PCS and file system got 3 and 4% respectively, project import got 18, UI freezes accounted for 31%. It turned out that the small and not so small hang ups were some of the biggest time sinks. Along with this, we already had a pretty good picture of how it was from our bug tracker, our own experience, and from communication with users. We understood that uh, we need to move our attention and focus more on things related to the performance and stability of the ID, as at this point we can greatly change the situation and make the developer, development experience significantly better. To start with, let's figure out what ID features performance most affects the quality of the uh, dev experience. Here we can say that there are smooth typing, whatever happens, the typing should be instant. ID responsiveness, it should be always uh, give a uh, an immediate response to your actions. Code completion and highlighting. Speed should never make you wait for its results. Navigation and find usages uh, as intentionally involved actions can be allowed a bit more time to be done, but still they shouldn't break your development flow. Indexing, well, it depends on the situation. I will talk uh, about two interesting approaches, how we work with indexing times. Let me walk you through our results step by step. Consider the code completion speed. Last year, we were focused on algorithms and based on the anonymous statistics. This situation looked like this. Only 7.5% of cases went beyond an interval of uh, half a second. We didn't stop there and continued to optimize it. By the time of 1370, it was already a different picture. As you can see, the response uh, time uh, has shifted into the instant execution category. Some of you might ask, why did I choose these categories? Well, Performance is a rather vast and complex area. The scientific world contains a lot of research about uh, people, people's perception of response time. Uh, let me give you some average overall findings. If you have to wait for 100 to 200 milliseconds, then it's perceived as instantaneous. If you have to wait for 500 to 1000 milliseconds, then this is an immediate response and you completely keep your attention on the object. 
The next interval is between 2 and 5 seconds. It's called a continuous reaction, and uh, you perceive it as a series of events, but still in a single process. And if you have to wait for 7 to 10 seconds, this is the last border where you can still keep the context of the task in your mind. After that, you gradually begin to lose it. In reality, these intervals are used for more complex calculations, but here uh, I will keep it simple and use them only for grouping. In addition to speeding up the code completion, we organized incremental cache management. This means uh, that in some cases, ID, the ID understands better what indexes need to be rechecked and does less work. It reduces latency when typing and speeds up code completion and highlighting. This is what happens, for example, when you write inside a function with an explicitly declared return type. The outer cache remains the same. Also, the module responsible for Java and Kotlin interoperability has been partially reworked. This has accelerated many performance components in case of uh, cross-language code interaction. By the way, it's worth noting that uh, performance is generally perceived relatively. It means that there is some kind of baseline that a person considers as a standard. Let's take, for example, code completion in gradle.kts files. Sometimes, to give you a proper suggestion, the ID needs to interact with Gradle and sometimes even get data from the internet. It takes time, and you wouldn't be ready to wait if you interacted directly with the Gradle through, say, command line. But in code completion, the same work is expected to be done faster. Generally, we agree with that. In releases uh, 1.3.72 and 1.4, we work together with the Gradle team and our IntelliJ IDEA colleagues uh, and rework the mechanism of uh, interaction from all sides. So now, code completion in Gradle.kts files looks much better in terms of speed. And yet, we still need to improve a lot. Um, a significant part of users goes beyond one second. Another example, people who have come to Kotlin from, say, C++, or who have learned it as their first programming language. They perceived the performance differently than people who have just come from Java or who periodically work in a Java code base. Here, our colleagues have set the bar high, and what we are going to do about this, I'll tell you in a few moments. Together with the IntelliJ platform team, we worked, uh, we worked on the code highlighting algorithm. And in this case, we did not increase the processing speed by much, but we made its appearance more consistent and meaningful. We actually can affect the user's perception of time passing while they wait for something. In the beginning, we show only the most basic syntax information. So, you receive it much earlier than before. The calculation of less important data occurs right after. Take, for example, our benchmark tests that we run on uh, Space, a relatively big multi-platform project. Space is an integrated team environment that we use inside JetBrains and is going to be released this autumn. So, the benchmark tests showed that the basic highlighting time for files open for the first time in the session was halved. Another representation of the data is a chart that shows us how the highlighting time has shifted towards the desired group. This improvement came with IntelliJ IDEA 2020.1. Also, this benchmark test framework is available in the Kotlin plugin repository. You can use it, say, if you still feel that code highlighting doesn't work quickly enough. This framework will show you what files have the longest highlighting time, and you can collect additional diagnostic information from them and send it to us. 
It will help us a lot with the further optimization. Well, once I saw a meme from the movie Interstellar, where the two main characters go to a planet with a different gravitation field, and one of them says, one hour here equals seven years on Earth. The other replies, great. Then I will wait here for IntelliJ idea indexing to finish. Yes, our community has a good sense of humor. As we recall from the study I mentioned above, indexing turned out to be a big time thing. How can this be solved? The procedure is really heaven long. In the IntelliJ IDEA 2020.2, we introduced shared indexes, which promised to reduce the time spent on project indexing by up to 75%. The bottom line here uh, is that uh, you don't need every computer to process and index the same external project dependencies or all of uh, your common project if you are only working on a small part of it. The system gives you the ability to create local storage for the indexes, uh, as well as to connect uh, to global storage where, for example, JetBrains keeps indexes for uh, JDKs. To set up this feature uh, for your project, Read the instructions on the documentation side. It should be easy. In release 1.4, we have fixed about 50 different problems registered in our issue tracker related to ID freezing or excessive CPU or memory consumption. This, as you can see, improved the performance in almost all the main points. Such a track uh, reports are very helpful for us to improve ID performance. Please. Create them if you have any such problems. And to help us handle them better, please follow a couple of recommendations. The ticket should contain diagnostic information about the state of the CPU or memory. It can be easily obtained from the description here. Also, it's good to describe what you were doing, at what place in the file and uh, how exactly the problem arises. And of course, it's important that the diagnostic information was taken from the latest version of the plugin. By the way, the previous case of freezing on copy-paste now looks like this. We open the file for the first time, copy the text, and immediately pasted it where needed. This improvement is also not about speeding up the algorithm, it's about separating the UI and calculations. If you have experienced uh, performance issues, I can't wait to see what you think after the update. Don't forget to update IntelliJ IDEA itself, as well as improvements have been made both in the plugin and in the platform. Therefore, if you work with Android Studio, some updates may, talk, may take a little longer to reach you, and we are cooperating with our friends at Google to shorten this delivery cycle. So, performance isn't the only thing our users want from us. In the beginning, I talked about the stability and quality of the ID. We have been focusing on fixing the exception reports you sent from the ID. According to the anonymous statistics, with each release, the number of exception reports decreases by one and a half to two times in, compared to the previous release. In addition to this, based on the same source of uh, statistics uh, and our issue tracker, we improved the quality of the debugger, formatter, refactorings, and other things. The quality of the ID can have a big impact on how easy it is to work with technologies. When you are working with one of the most popular libraries, caroutines, sometimes questions may arise. For example, during debugging. What variables, what state, what call stack a specific caroutine has? And the ID should help you with this. Here we have a lot of new interesting things. My colleague, Seva, We'll tell you more about this uh, in his talk, yeah. Don't miss it. Also, 
In 1.4, we introduced a new project wizard, which uh, you can use not only select a predefined template like before, but also configure the project yourself. You set the structure of modules and execution targets that uh, you are interested in. And the tool generates the project and all the necessary code itself. We kept all of the existing templates and even added a few more. Light editing. We know quite a few cases when you just want to quickly look into some file, correct one line or read a small piece of code. You don't want to load the ID and all its features for this. Your time is precious, so you use third-party lightweight ed editors. This is actually a crazy story. Why? Uh, if the ID provides so many capabilities, can it now provide the simplest solution? Starting this year, IntelliJ IDEA now provides the ability to open files in a lightweight version of the editor that loads very quickly and has just a very limited set of uh, basic features. Now you can use the same product in both use cases. We have all the above in the Kotlin plugin 1.4 and IntelliJ IDEA 2020.2. Please update to them and tell us what you think. But you are probably wondering, what's next? And here, let me share with you our immediate plans. First, we are continuing to explore the possibilities of speeding up the code completion, highlighting and navigation. Second, we will also improve the responsiveness of the ID by eliminating deadlocks, freezes and optimizing memory consumption, as well as stability of our plugin and its features. Third, many of us work in a mixed Java and Kotlin code bases, and the ID should not lose in its capabilities due to these circumstances. Probably, uh, problems, pro problems uh, usually don't arise, but sometimes they do and require additional work. Here, we have almost finished developing and will soon release complete cross-language support for inline and change signature refactorings. You will have the same dev experience working in a mixed Java and Kotlin language base as you do when working with one language. You have probably already heard about the development of the new compiler plugin, um, new compiler frontend. One of its advantages is significantly faster compilation. Now, the Kotlin plugin uses the old frontend everywhere, and we are sure that by moving to the new one, the speed of many operations in the IDE will increase. This task itself is not so fast. It will, be not, it will not be completed before the new compiler itself is released, but we are already prototyping and have some very good results. Generally, our focus remains the same. It's mostly on performance and quality. The ID Kotlin team, IntelliJ Kotlin team, did some really nice work, but we feel it's still not enough. For instance, the new type inference algorithm does more precise calculations, so code completion gives you more accurate suggestions, but in some cases it takes a bit more time. So, we're continuing on in, this, in the same direction. Our plans are reflected in the general roadmap of the Kotlin project. They will be updated over time. Come and take a look, rate them, and share your thoughts with us. Oh, yeah, I have something more. What else can be important for improving the product besides working on the quality of features, performance, and new tools? We analyzed our workflow, evaluated our future plans, and realized that the current infrastructure of our IntelliJ Kotlin plugin is causing more overhead than it could than it should. Perhaps someone found it strange that I was talking about the new things in the plugin first and in the platform. After all, we often hear after IntelliJ updates, people ask when it will be supported in Kotlin. Will it be available in Kotlin? We came to the conclusion that being a plugin in the Kotlin repository makes us less efficient over time. So, 
We have set a course to get closer to the IntelliJ platform. What does it mean? Well, originally, Kotlin was an independent project. It determined its own path, and uh, having the IntelliJ pl plugin in the language repository was the right way to go. Too strong a connection to the platform could hinder its development. Now, the situation is totally different. Both the language and the plugin are mature enough. The Kotlin plugin is moving to the IntelliJ repo. It will be done in two steps. The first step, which we have almost completed, is a kind of joint repo that uh, contains just two of these projects. The second step is to have a mono repo of the IntelliJ platform and the Kotlin plugin. How does this benefit everyone? IntelliJ IDEA developers will be able to support their features for Kotlin right away. Together with this, the Kotlin plugin gets aligned with the IntelliJ platform release cycle. At the, time, uh, at the, at the same time, releases of Kotlin language uh, Releases of Kotlin language will also come out together with uh, IntelliJ with ID support for the new language features. It becomes better for contributors. You have more options for working with the platform, and the IntelliJ IDEA contributors can now do more for Kotlin as well. Finally, this will amplify the development of the Kotlin plugin. Previously, in the Kotlin project. I mean, in the Kotlin codebase. A concrete version of the IntelliJ platform was treated as a, an external dependency. <clears throat> Whereas now, Kotlin plugin and IntelliJ platform start to be in a mono repo. And the developer is working in a single codebase. In such a collaboration, we will achieve good results faster, as it will be easier for us to promote changes such as log-free copy-paste or proper code highlighting order. Often such improvements require modification for both the plugin and the platform. It kind of turns out that the improvement of uh, ID performance is determined by the development team performance, and the developer performance is determined by ID performance. And uh, I think our performance for today is coming to an end. I hope you found this presentation interesting. Keep up with the latest versions of our products and share your feedback. Thank you on behalf of our entire team for being with us. Have a nice evening. Have a nice Kotlin.